can direct you to places to learn about that from our website if you're interested. Relative pronation, they're just going to start to cave in the arch, which people consider pronation. The knees knock inwards, you get into a valgus positioning with the knees where the knee is inwards. And when, as soon as the knee comes in, as soon as the knee comes in, you drop into an anterior pelvic tilt. Now the lower abdominals, the lower transverse abdominus and the fourth, third and fourth rectus abdominus aren't contracting. Once this happens, you're arching your back. Once you're arching your back, you can't get into your glute. So you can see how caving in through the medial tripod can get you out of your glutes and out of your abs in a big hurry. Every step of the day or every repetition in the gym. Um, and it'll cause medial we uh, weakness of the chain. If you're dropping in here, you might not have enough tone, for example, in this muscle, to get yourself back out. And not enough tone to lift this up, not enough tone to get upright. You'll cave in through the success. The, the successive weaknesses of these chains just because the tripod wasn't are, um, uh, active or competent is a better word. And I can email this. This is such a, a sketchy presentation. I can email this to you. If you're running, r rushing through to write it down, just email me. I'll just send you the presentation. It's very small. So it's keeping you, and then you drop into your quad dominant pattern, right? You need to stay here and over the tripod of the foot and go down into those patterns. Um, loss of lateral tripod. This is the opposite. Now your foot is outwards. Forefoot valgus position, the foot tips outwards. Relative supination, bowed legs, varus knees, posterior pelvic tilt. People who are bow-legged tend to be very well into their lower glute. They can't find their upper glute. They're artificially in what looks like a good lower abdominal position, but it's because they're lifting here. They're not lifting from here. A great exercise, and you guys can do this at the very end because I know I'm short on time, is to stand, squeeze your glutes and contract your ab, hold that position and let go of your glute. You'll feel your ab all of a sudden kick in. And if it wasn't kicked in, then your habit is using the glute to keep the pelvis neutral. Hold that, let go of your glute. You have to be pulling through your, upper ab, your lower ab to do that. So little things like this can help you figure out what your client doing. Are they glute dominant holding up the pel pelvic position? And what else helps that? The hamstring. Because the hamstrings pull this direction and the lower abs pull this direction. So when the lower abs get weak, what do you get? tightness of the hamstrings. And so stretching them may not be your solution. Again, abs and hip flexors lift, the hamstring should let go. When this isn't there, the hamstring will tighten because it says you don't have enough strength to get up that high, Sean, which I don't. So you must cheat the central nervous system. I just talked about this. You don't want to put the central nervous system pattern into it. Okay? If the glutes are not in charge when the foot is on the ground, um, you'll get into these abnormal patterns that we talked about. Quad dominance is not what you want in an athlete. Okay, you just don't want it. So orthotics and shoes, we kind of talked about this. They're either a solution to improve mechanics if you really know what you're doing, or they're band-aiding the mechanics.